In this video, we're going to provide the solution to question number three from the practice exam number three from Math 2270, for which we're supposed to let A and B both be four by four matrices. We know the determinant of A is equal to two. We know the determinant of B is equal to three. And we're supposed to compute the determinant of negative A inverse times B transpose. So some things we need to be aware of when it comes to computing determinants here, some properties. Well, one property of determinants that's gonna be very useful here is when you take the determinant of a scalar multiple of the matrix. So we have like R where R is some real number or just some scalar R times A right here. The determinant has the property that when you pull the scalar out of the determinant, well, since the determinant's multilinear, if you take the if you take the scalar out of each row individually, that's allowed. So if you take it away from the whole matrix, you're actually gonna take R out of the matrix N times. And so you're gonna get R to the N times the determinant of A right here. And so what this shows us is that to factor a scalar out of the determinant, you have to take that scalar out, but raise it to the power where the power is gonna be the size of the matrix. This is four by four. So if we wanna pull that negative one out, this will equal our determinant would equal negative one to the fourth power times the determinant of A inverse times B transpose, like so. In which case you get here negative one to the fourth, this will just become a positive, uh, positive one. So the negative one actually kind of disappears from consideration, right? And so I, I like this example because this is something that uh, causes many people some confusion here. It's like, well, why did the negative one disappear? Why don't you factor out the negative one? Uh, why, isn't, why isn't the answer negative? Because uh, we're gonna see the answer um, is, is one of these numbers, but a lot of students in the past have been very confused why it's not the negative of the answer provided. And that's because, again, uh, the determinant is not a linear transformation. It's a multilinear transformation. We have to take the negative sign out of each of the rows of the matrix. And as there's four rows, we take out four negative ones and, a, and an even power of negative one actually gives us positive one. All right, so that's the first property of determinants useful here. The next property can, that can be very useful here is if you have the determinant of a product, like take the determinant of A times B, this is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. So the determinant is a multiplicative function. You can factor uh, the determinant along the matrix product. So what this tells us here is that if we're taking the determinant of A inverse times B transpose, then this will become the determinant of A inverse times the determinant of B transpose. In which case, then we'll finish this up with two more properties to mention that if you take the determinant of an inverse matrix, that is, if you have a non-singular matrix, its determinant of the inverse will be the reciprocal. So you get the determinant, or one over the determinant of A, so you get the reciprocal determinant there. So what that tells us, of course, is that since the determinant of A was two, the determinant of A inverse is gonna be one half that we see. But what about the determinant of B transpose? Well, when it comes to determinant of B transpose, the transpose operation changes rows to columns and columns to rows. But when it comes to determinants, you could use Laplace's cofactor expansion across any row or any column. So if you switch rows to columns, that's still an eligible row or column to expand across. So transposing a matrix does not affect the determinant. This will just be the determinant of B. Now, if you take the conjugate transpose, then of course the transpose won't do anything to determine it, but the conjugate will, it'll take the conjugate of the determinant. So in this situation, we're just taking the transpose of B. So this will still give you the determinant of B, which is three, in which case then the correct answer should be three halves, which we see is choice C. And like I said, many students have been very tempted by choice B, not realizing that they should take out four negative ones instead of just a single negative one.